Great. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have only 15 minutes, so I'll try to be fast. Uh, I'm going to be talking today and actually doing a little bit of demo. Whoops, where is the HDMI cable? We need to plug it in. Did we? Thank you. Here we go. Okay, and we're going to be talking about uh, alignment of security with monitoring and alerting, especially in the context of security, in order to create what I would call the real security or the closed loop uh, security. Uh, so, uh, and I'm also going to uh, demonstrate, you know, these concepts in a small demo using uh, Sentinet, which is a product from Nivatech, and that's an API management software infrastructure. Uh, so let's first uh, talk about security by itself in its traditional or classical, from its traditional classical perspective. Uh, the most well-known components that it comprised of uh, is uh, messages confidentiality, which means that messages have to be transmitted over the wire, you know, in encrypted form so that nobody can see the content. Uh, traditional SSL HTTPS transport, for example, gives that capability out of the box. But there are other use cases when messages can be uh, at XML level encrypted, for example, in certain SOAP protocols and so on. Uh, the other related aspect is messages integrity. That's also part of a classical you know, security uh, uh, model. Uh, which, provide, uh, which is provided by the di digital signature and ensures that messages are not altered uh, while they're on a, you know, in a flight. And uh, both of these aspects are usually associated with you know, digital cryptography. And then there are two additional uh, you know, vital and always kind of a must-have uh, components of the traditional security, which is authentication. We know that this is about identifying who the user is or identity of the caller, whatever form of identity it might be, username, password, X509 certificate, Kerberos token, you know, API security key, OAuth tokens with claims, doesn't matter. Uh, the user has to be identified and that identity has to be proven. So the, the, we, we have confidence that uh, user is who, who he claims it is. And of course, on top of that, there is a authentic, uh, authorization or the access control. So once we know who the user is, what's the identity, we can make conscientious decision whether we want to grant that particular proven identity access to the underlying you know, business functionality within our API. So these are traditional things. So uh, let's say hypothetically that we have our API that uh, uh, covered by all these aspects. Uh, would we say that we have security? Well, it might sound yes, because in reality, if we have all these things, and they, of course, include many other things, like authorization or access control might include, you know, uh, content, message content validation, you know, from the perspective of, you know, SQL injections or, or many other different criteria. So, again, fundamentally, just these four bullets that covers the classical security. Um, so, again, let's say we have that covered. Uh, so we can be confident that messages do not penetrate into the actual business service execution engine, right? They are not executed. But do we really have uh, full closed loop security? The answer is not yet, actually not, because what we're missing is visibility into security. Yes, we are confident that messages are coming through only uh, based on the proper security uh, configurations, but we don't have any visibility of what's actually happened, what was rejected, what's coming in, what specific identities, and so on. So uh, what we really need to add, we need to add monitoring. And I'm going to be talking about monitoring specifically in the context of security itself, because we know monitoring is all about many other things, like uh, reporting, business analytics, you know, identifying services, performances, availability. I'm going to talk about the security aspect only within the monitoring. So uh, what does it actually give us in that context? Uh, first of all, uh, monitoring gives us visibility into the, uh, with, in a, with the logging of the failed security calls. So not only we 
know that nothing can penetrate our business execution, but we also can see uh, any attempts potentially of unsuccessful uh, uh, attempts of to, uh, unsuccessful attempts to execute our business logic. We can build a certain type of analysis based on that information. Um, for example, uh, we can go further down and try to identify where are the security, the, these failed messages, what's their origin, where are they coming from, who are they coming from, and then understand the reason for that. So drill down to the root cause analysis of the failed security. Uh, another interesting aspect is that uh, we can uh, actively and proactively build alerting on top of that collected monitoring data. So if you don't have collected monitoring data, it's hard to build any alerting system related uh, to that concept. But if we have, have collected all the monitoring data, we can start building alerting, and that can be active and proactive, meaning that we can start you know, blocking calls ahead of time, or if we see that a particular business partner is sending too many messages, we, you know, we can proactively do certain things in relationship to that partner. Uh, typically, all these you know, aspects, including security that I talked about, uh, managed by uh, you know, uh, organizations through the API management software infrastructure. If these APIs are business critical, then they definitely want to have API management infrastructures. I'm not going to talk about them in, more, in, in a lot of details, just mention that they can actually absorb responsibility to deal with all these challenges without imposing any effort on developers of API and let developers of APIs to do their actual business and build the, the API itself with its business logic, whatever it needs to execute. So with the API management software infrastructures, we typically pretty much it's as a concept. Uh, there is an introduction of an API gateway, which is sort of intermediary that is now injected to stay between ultimate consumer and the API itself. Uh, and that API gateway, as I mentioned, absorbs responsibility to enforce and implement security, access control. It provides you non-intrusive monitoring out of the box. But that, at the same time, introduces uh, additional leg of communication. So you, your consumer calls API Gateway, and then K API Gateway turns around and makes a call to the backend system. And these two legs, from security perspective, might have completely different security. Can be the same, can be different. Your internal service might be deployed with one security uh, that uh, it expects from the API Gateway, and it all happens inside your network. And then the Gateway exposes completely different security model to outside, you know, ultimate consumer. And either security might fail, and that's why either security has to be, has to be given visibility. So you have to know where things are failing, on inbound side or outbound side. Um, so le that leads also to the point that monitoring has to be provided through the end-to-end -end security monitoring. And that also applies if you have not only the, the API gateway, but even if you have, a, uh, for example, microservices architecture, when your services calls and other services and so on. So you need to see the you need to have visibility into security of all these you know, cross-related uh, calls. So at the end of the day, addressing uh, through proper aligned monitoring with security, addressing these challenges uh, gives us an uh, instrument to remediate any security issues. And it's the monitoring that gives us this capability. So uh, if we consider a Slovna some sort of a pillar, that I would call A security, meaning traditional, and then another pillar, which is monitoring and alerting, then uh, if we proper align them, only then we build the real foundation for the real security. Without the proper alignment or missing one of the pillars, we have broken security. It's half security, so it's dangerous. Uh, so I'm going to show you that a little bit on a practical demo, uh, using Sentinet as an API management and uh, governance uh, software infrastructure. And I'm going to switch quickly to my virtual machine, where you would see the management console, API management console. Uh, on the left side, we'll see a repository of services and APIs. 
uh, organized by different folders, which means categorized, grouped together. So I'm going to drill down to a few demo use cases, uh, some services and APIs registered in the repository. And as you can see, I have my backend, which we call physical services, and then virtual services. These are the services that are exposed through API Gateway. So they provide an endpoints that feel like real service and behave like real service for the ultimate consumer. But in reality, they are not services. They are just smart intermediaries that forward messages back to the backend service. Uh, so without going into too many details uh, with the lack of time about the demo use case, uh, I just quickly mentioned that I built it in such a way that there is a chain of few API calls in this demo that are triggered by you know just a regular REST API call with no security. And then it goes through API gateways twice and then reaches the backend service, which is a public online service, some basic calculator. Uh, so in the course of this chain of uh, API calls, uh, there is some security implemented and enforced by API gateway. And what I would like to demonstrate that that security not only implemented, because that's not the, the, the main point of this presentation, but also what kind of visibility it can give from the security perspective. So uh, I have that basic calculator uh, service. I can see all the details. Uh, you know, I can look at the operation, and then I can find the endpoint. Uh, and I'm going to make a call to a couple of uh, operations, which I already pre-prepared. So. This is the method and operation to make an add call, to add to numbers one and two. First time it will take a little bit of time because it needs to warm up the system and you know create connection to the cloud because it all goes through the cloud. Oh, one more interesting aspect. The actual security uh, model in this demo, it's not, I intentionally made it a little bit less trivial and it uses actually auth security model integration where Sentinet specifically uh, is demonstrated to integrate with any auth uh, you know, provider infrastructure. In this case, it's integrated on the fly with uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory. It could have been any other auth server infrastructure, you know, Google, Salesforce, your own implementation. As long as it stays on all standards, Internet will support it. So, uh, well, do I have internet connection? Probably not. because my message keeps spinning. And if that's the case, it doesn't matter, because I sent them just half an hour, a few more. I'll show you the end result anyway. Let's see. I still have a few minutes to check if my internet connection is here. And it's not. OK, it doesn't matter. Uh, so my intent was to send uh, messages to uh, one operation, add numbers uh, with success. The other operation is to divide one by zero. So that would cause backend service to fail. And that error should be propagated all the way through the gateway to the client. And then a third call that would uh, violate the security in the first place. So because I've sent them just half an hour ago or so, I can see these messages. Oh, it just came through. Nice. So that call just came through. OK. Let's continue. Let's do the second one quickly. So I'll just paste different URL. That would cause the error. Oops, zero. Wow, it's incredibly slow. OK, let's go historically back. It's a, Oh, here it is. So an error occurred. And finally, the last one that breaks security. Access is not provided. OK, so now I'm looking. One minute. I still I have it. Uh, looking at the, uh, these messages really quickly, I can look through the entire process end to end security, see what I, where actually it failed. I can see that it failed at the response on the backend service. This one caused me not even bother the backend service. So I know the security failed. I can drill down to the details of each transaction. And I can see the identity of the user in the form of the claim. So I know who 
called the uh, who called the service uh, can build analytics troubleshooting what was the access rule what's the status code in the other case i can see that access token is not provided and i can see these kind of details and in the case of divided by zero everything was fine uh, but the uh, backend service uh, through the backend uh, you know his own its own uh, uh, business error that was all the way propagated so basically with that level of monitoring you can dr drill down to all the details and understand why security fails pinpoint to the security issues and uh, quickly fix them uh, we actually on the practical side 10 seconds uh, we had a case with a customer who adopted sentinet put it in production made the switch uh, on a DNS server to use Sentinet instead of what they used to have. And the same day, they identified that some business partner uh, left phantom application that was bombarding them, you know, with broken security issues, which they've been experiencing for months, and they didn't know about that. So the same day, they contacted business partner, and business partner took off offline this phantom application. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.